Hey everyone, it's Lance from Epics and Stuffs. I've had a few people ask how I go about supporting my files, so I thought I'd do this impromptu video to show you how I take a model from ZBrush, scale it, repair it, and eventually hollow it and support it. I'll aim to do as much as this as I can live. So, so yeah, so let's get to it. Um, I thought I'd firstly explain a little bit in ZBrush and, and some of the thought process behind the methods we use to get this model from ZBrush into Prusa. So here's a model I recently released uh, at Dwarf Gravedigger for my patrons. He's in quite a few different pieces. So we use a piece of um, basically a, a tool inside of ZBrush called Dynamesh to, to meld all these pieces together and essentially make it a watertight model. To avoid like crashes and too much geometry, the, the model's kind of like an arbitrary scale. So it's not, it's not the scale you would eventually print this off, which is fine because I do all of my scaling in Prusa Slicer anyway. So, we use Dynamesh to get the model as one cohesive piece. And then we use another tool called Decimation Master, which will basically get rid of any geometry that doesn't add to the, the shape or the, you know, the, the details of the object to reduce the file size. So this is what uh, I typically end up with. I'll end up with the Gravedigger with his base, and then another version where he doesn't have a base. And then I'll export these two files into, into Prusa Slicer. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump to there. So here we are in Prusa. So my process from here is to bounce between Prusa Slicer and Cheetu Box to get the scale and integrity of the model sorted, as well as the, the hollowing and, and the supports as well. But first comes the scale and the integrity of, of the, the files that I've just exported. So so here we are in Prusa. I have it set up for their default SLA printer. It's nothing special. Uh, there's no special knowledge needed to, to set this up. I'll then uh, navigate to import STLs. And then navigate to where my models are. <clears throat> and then what I've got is the two models I've just exported from ZBrush plus a base which is the diameter it's dimensionally accurate it's the diameter of the the base that i want to to have these models scaled up to so with them input in select them all I'll rotate them so they're stood up and then from here i basically want to get these models to match the, the size of the base. So I'll pick the one with the base. And as you can see, he needs shrinking down quite a lot. So I'll move this one out of the way. This one. And I'll just play with the scale uh, to, to match it up. So bear with me whilst I do that. Just give it a go. Say about 35% is original scale. It's a bit crude, but it's the, the method that works for me. So 34.5. I say 34.25. So in this instance, that looks about good. So where does that like scale factor come from? It, it, it varies from model to model, depending on how big it, how big it comes out of ZBrush. So this number is not necessarily always the same, but in these particular models, it will be. So I can take the scale of this one, 34.25, and apply it to this one. Put them back in the center. So I can get rid of that base now. And now what I want to do is make sure the models are repaired. So in Prusa Slicer, they have a, an auto repair feature. Um, which is denoted by this icon here. You can right click that and it will start repairing the, the source model. So you'll have to give it a, a moment to do that. And this, this can vary massively depending on how much geometry is actually in the model. So if you have a, a load of geometry, then 
you know, it, it scales a lot bigger. The time it takes to do it. So that model's been repaired. So when you when you click on this, you can see down in the bottom, it, it, it tells you how many errors it, it's encountered when importing this model. So we want to get rid of those errors as much as we can. 90% of the time, they don't actually affect the way something prints, but it's just nice to have a cleaner model go in um, and then chances are you'll run into less problems. If you've got like a super detailed model, more errors pretty, you know, can translate to, to more issues when it comes to printing. So this is nearly done. With both of them now repaired and at the size I want, I can export them back over the files I've just imported. So you can right click on these icons up here, export STL, and then you can just export over the files that you've already made. Okay, so from here, I'll load up Chi2 box for the next step, which is gonna be hollowing the model. So if we open, navigate to the models that we've just exported. So I don't need, I, I like to work with the one with the base. So I'm going to import that one. And there he is in G2 box. I'm going to go to hollow. And I typically use a wall thickness for my models at this scale of one millimeter. Press start. There it is being hollowed. <laughs> okay, so now we need to add some drain holes to this guy. So we don't want resin trapped inside of him when he prints. So I'll use the slider in this instance. Uh, tell it how big I want the drain holes to be. And then delete those pieces so as you can see now from his base he has two drain holes he has an interior so when I put IPA or cleaning cleaning solution inside this it'll it'll get around the interior so just to, when, when hollowing there is a couple of things that you, you can look out for which is areas of a model that are separated by you know with different interior chunks so this this spade here could be one so it only has like a very small hole going through so chances are not much cleaning solution or ipa would actually get into this area for this guy at this size it's probably not going to be an issue but if you have a big cavity which you know cannot be cleared of of um, the resin itself you could potentially end up with a break in future so in this instance, it's not too bad. Just leaving it to cure a bit longer or, or, or upping your cure intensity and stuff like that uh, should should help that. So once this guy is done, I will save as and then export him as an STL again. Underscore hollowed. Give that a moment to write. And then I will come back into Prusa Slicer. And then import again, the hollowed version. Once again, now, now that it's been hollowed and more geometry has been added to the interior and we've added drain holes, we want to re-repair this particular model. So we'll repair that. And whilst that's repairing, with regards to drain holes, ideally you want two or more on a model. They don't need to be at like opposite ends of the model, just one in, one out. It's just easy to get solution in and out to clean it that way and also relieves a lot of pressure, um, suction pressure when it comes to, to printing. The reason I, I print my guys on, on the base, as you see, is purely because I, I act as if the base is like a sacrificial thing. So if the base doesn't print completely right, I can always shave the base off. But it also gives me a good place to put... Um, those drain holes so now that's been repaired I'll re-export it again over itself so I've got the repaired version and now I will start with supports so I, I typically tilt my models back and I use 
this formula, this is what I found to work most of the time, which is minus 45 over x and minus 15 over y. Um, I tend to place the the details up front, so I want the the supports to go on the back of the model where it's less it's you know it's less important essentially. Um, so then once once we've got it at this angle, I will click on the SLA support feature, which is this uh, icon here, and then I'll just auto generate supports. Give that a moment to do its thing. Okay, so these are the supports it's generated me. So most people say like you've got to, you've got to have every single island supported. It's not necessarily the case that is the ideal. The auto support feature in Prusa Slicer does a wicked job of getting that right 99% of the time, but it doesn't always work. So I, I, I do a majority of the, the, the auto support in, uh, in Prusa Slicer, and then I go into Cheaty Box, and then I support here or there, depending on whether or not I feel it will actually print. So I'll run you through that now. So this is what it's generated. And you might notice a few things like these little dots here. This is where it's thought something should be supported, but it hasn't got the, the room to generate a support. So in this instance, looking at them, and this this is something you'll just, you know, you'll, you'll a type of experience you'll get over time after printing and printing and printing. Um, you, you'll deem whether or not stuff like this is necessary. So then I'll go into manual editing and then you'll see all these are the points where it's got stuff uh, where it's placed the support. So I will get rid of those two things. And then I like to support the base better. So I'm just basically selecting where I want these supports to, to be generated. And then I'll have a look around the model and just see whether or not there's anything here that I feel could do with a bit more support. I feel around here might be good. And here as well, if that is an option. And then once I'm happy with what I th think will work, I press apply changes and let it regenerate them. There we go, it's got the supports there. It's managed to support those areas there. Let's get rid of that knob. So that's pretty much where I would leave it at. A final check. It's not 100% auto support, so as you can see, I, I do I do go over it a little bit just to be sure. Okay, I think that's good enough. So what I would do from here is file, export, export plate as STL, including supports, and then give that title supported, save, and then go back into G2 box, file open supported version so here it is in cheaty box so I, I i go through it one more time just to be certain i'm happy with the way the supports are laid out so again i'll use the slider and then i will just grow it up from top to bottom and just check there is nothing massively outstanding so you can see here there's some material here that will will start getting baked without a support attached to it. However, if within a couple of layers that is then attached to supports, you'll find that will probably print. So I wouldn't necessarily go in and, and put a support or light support on that because it, it, it probably won't need it because the next layer up, so it goes from 
two far two six five and then within two layers it's attached to something a lot chunkier and then within ten layers it is it, it's got more more supports on it so chances are that will be fine um so we'll keep going up here so there's a, there's another one here where a chunk seems to like it seems to see if look look as if it's going to be printing into space and it will but then within a layer it's attached to and within a few layers it's attached to, to, to plenty more supports we'll keep going so now this is one I would resupport in some fashion so it's it comes into existence there and then it's a couple of layers before it's attached to a support but it's quite a large surface area so this is where I would actually want to support that so we'll get a support in there just to be sure Here is another one I would probably want to support. So we'll get that guy done as well. So it's just going in and out, up and down just to be sure that that has the support it needs here is another one and there as well And the rest of that looks good. So, okay, let's just remove that raft there, make sure it's level. <coughs> so, yeah, this model is pretty much good to go. It may have looked like I did that quite quickly. I'm quite confident in this process. I've printed somewhere in the region of about two and a half, three thousand models now, um, like this. So, yeah, I'm quite quite used to the process your mileage may vary you know with the printer you're using its stability resolution the type of model detail the supports you use so on and so forth the method I'm using here you know won't work on every single model out there um, and nor with necessarily you've got to find with every single printer you've got to find something that's right that that's right for you but th this is the method I use for the, the the sculpts and the models that I put out on my patreon um, and the success rate so far has been really high and the feedback has been overwhelmingly good um so yeah th th this this seems to work so th does every island need to be supported no, not necessarily um does you know ev every void area um need to be cut into it, it, it all depends on again the model the details involved how long you cure your cleaning process and stuff like that but yeah this is it's it's quite quite a successful process for myself finally just want to give a quick shout out to all my patrons whose support allows me to do what i do and if you're you're interested in the model shown uh, or the patreon please follow the links in the video description below there's some free stuff on there um so so yeah uh, thanks again uh, stay safe